Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in this short series on making a quiz game in Unity using C Sharp. So uh, a lot of you guys have been requesting me to do some smaller series, maybe only a few videos long, that cover how to make different kind of games. And we are going to begin with a quiz game. Hopefully um, I will be able to teach uh, basic object-oriented programming concepts. Uh, we will also focus on how to uh, store data and manipulate data in, form of, in the form of que uh, questions. And uh, then how to display that data in Unity using uh, Unity GUI system. So it's going to be a lot of fun if you are a beginner to intermediate uh, user. Uh, this series is just for you. And um, yeah, so before we get started, I just want to say that the multiplayer FPS tutorial and the 2D platformer course is still being worked on. Of course, I have some really cool stuff coming out for that as well. So this is just extra stuff. Don't freak out. So um, let's just jump right into it. So. What we are going to be making in this video is the actual interface. We're not going to be programming, we're just going to be sketching some stuff out in Unity. And I have something really cool that we can use to do that. So let's just make a new project here and I'm going to call mine uh, simply quiz game and I'm going to save it under projects and select 2D as default. Let's then hit create project and Unity will open up a standard default project for us. So there's going to be nothing in here. What you could do now is simply right click here and go under UI and start building the interface using these elements. However, I searched around a bit and I've actually found a really cool plugin that has some nice features or some nice elements that we can use for our interface. And it's called Material UI. It's a uh, Unity plugin that has created the Google Material Design in Unity. So you can see all of the cool looking elements right here uh, that we are now able to use. We are not going to be using uh, all of the different features in this. We are basically just going to be using some uh, nice uh, buttons with a, a cool uh, click animation and some nice shadows and uh, maybe a bit of the color palettes and stuff like that. But you can really create some advanced stuff with this. This package costs about $50 on the asset store. So if you don't have that money, and I definitely don't expect you to buy this, you can either follow along in Unity using the normal stuff, or do as I will do in this video, and use the beta version before the official released release, which is still publicly available on GitHub. So you're fine to use this. This is licensed under the Apache license, and uh, you can definitely use this commercially. So uh, I'm going to have a link to this GitHub page where you can download it in the description. Again, should the link be broken or this stuff be taken down, you can either sacrifice the money and get this really cool plugin or just use the default stuff in Unity. It's going to be just as fine. There's nothing we are going to be using here that you can't do in Unity. So let's click Material UI Unity Package for the latest release. And you can see that it will be downloading down here. As soon as it stops downloading, uh, we can simply click on this to open it up in Unity. That's the cool thing about Unity packages. They are uh, completely wrapped, uh, finished packages that you can import into Unity and it will take care of structuring everything together and all that. So you can see we have this material UI folder which, with a bunch of different assets inside and we're just going to import them all here. So this might take a little while depending on your computer because um, this material UI pl plugin has a lot of elements in it. Uh, I've used it for several pro projects now and I've uh, been really fond of using it. So uh, especially, especially for the animations, which are really, really well done. So uh, we should get hopefully no errors. You might get a warning here. That's just complaining about some line ending. So I'm just going to clear that. That's definitely not on the to-do list. So let's hop into the material UI folder. And you can see that they've even included a starter scene. This just has a standard main camera with a white uh, color. It has a canvas um, with... Um, some different settings on it and uh, just an event system which follows in any kind of canvas. So you can see in the game right now we just have this right white uh, screen. 
So let's go ahead and add an element to this. Let's right click on the canvas. Let's go under material UI instead of UI. And you can see we have a lot of, a lot of different stuff. Just as in the Unity, we have a text as we have under the uh, Unity UI. You also have a text here and a panel and all that stuff. But we also have some extra elements such as uh, radio buttons, switches, uh, some uh, selection boxes and stuff like that. You can go crazy playing around with these. So what we are going to select is just panel. I want to make the panel from uh, where we will select our questions. And you can see that it's already added this nice panel with some rounded edges and a, a cool shadow. I'm going to make this darker. So let's select our main camera and change the background color. And uh, if you go under presets here and click this button right here, in you, instead of having just the default, you can change uh, to one of these um, project presets right here and those are included with the material UI. Uh, so I'm just going to select basics here and we can select the basic uh, back dark background color here. Then we can find our panel, open that, go under panel layer and let's change this uh, color to the same one except maybe just a bit brighter there. So something like this looks uh, pretty good. Now we can select the entire panel and uh, let's uh, hold down Alt and uh, while we scale it on the horizontal axis, almost all the way over here. And let's now uh, drag it up a bit, something like there. And then also scale it up, something like that. I think that looks pretty nice and you can always change this later. Now let's anchor this correctly so that it will scale correctly with the screen. So uh, let's first off, um, yeah, let's choose this one so it will stretch horizontally and be anchored to the top. So if we now move our canvas here, oops, if we move our canvas, you can see that it will follow. And if we move the top here, you can see that it will just follow the top, but not scale uh, vertically. So that's perfect. And what we can do is just take our scene view and put that over here. This way we can have a nice preview of our game here and work on the right hand side. So the next thing that we need to add is uh, a couple of buttons that we can click. Um, I want our quiz game to have two states. Either the question is true or it's false. And depending on what you uh, choose, you can get either a co correct answer or a wrong answer. So that's kind of uh, how we will model this out. You could definitely have different options here. Uh, you could say in what year was Jason Bourne uh, created? And uh, then you can have three different options if you want. And that's completely fine. It's the same basic concepts, but I think for simplicity, we're only going to have two. So let's go under canvas. Let's right click that and go under your material UI and let's select a button and it's going to be a text raised. So you can see just how that looks. And let's take this button and let's drag it over. So it's uh, aligned with the center and let's drag it up so it's aligned uh, with our panel there and drag it down so it's aligned with our bottom. And let's take the same button and we don't want to align it here, we want these surfaces to align. You can see that the um, box here is a bit bigger than the button itself, that's because we uh, have the shadow in there too. So we'll have to drag it out here and just do an eye measurement. That looks good. Use the grid to align them there and you can see that uh, that looks like a sharp edge over there. Something like that looks pretty good. And uh, now we can go ahead and configure this button a bit. So uh, if we uh, go under here, actually, let's just rename our panel here. This is going to be the question panel or statement panel, panel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and uh, this down here is going to be the true button. And uh, we can go under the button layer go and do the button text and let's delete the snap button to text because we don't want the size of our button to be controlled by the text. And now we can take the font size here and scale that up dramatically. Let's also change uh, the font type here from maybe Roboto regular to a Roboto medium. That looks pretty good. And uh, we also want to change the color here to a white down here using the preset. Uh, that looks cool. Let's change the uh, text here to true. 
and then we can maybe scale it up a bit further something like that then we can take the button layer itself and let's make this a light blue something like that looks pretty good and uh, yeah i think we will begin with that at least uh, i actually want this text maybe to be just a bit wider something like that and uh, then let's make a second button so let's duplicate this true button let's move it over just like this so it's aligned let's make this the false button so change the name here to false button and by the way to duplicate it i simply pressed ctrl d or command d if you're on the mac let's go to the button layer and let's first change the color here we want it to be completely red and um, actually the tint already looks very nice so maybe just a bit more saturated there that looks super cool let's uh, open this up and go to button text and let's change this to false so there we go we have very clearly indicate with both both uh, f uh, colors and font that these are polar opposites uh, now what we can do is maybe scale these buttons in a bit i think they're a bit too far apart uh, so we can maybe just take this and if we uh, okay so let's anchor them correctly first actually so let's take the true and the false button and change their anchors uh, so we basically want them to scale with the entire screen on one axis but only half the screen on another axis so we want them to scale around the center here and then half the uh, horizontal uh, width yeah good uh, so in order to do that let's make them stretch here and simply click that down here and then we'll make sure that if our uh, canvas scales on the Y you can see that the button scale with it however it's not currently good on the X uh, so we will select our true button and we'll take this oh we'll take this anchor here if I can just click it there we go and move this all the way over this way when I resize the canvas you can see that that resizes in a nice way resizes with this part of the screen then we can take the false button and do the same except now we take the right part here and drag it all the way over so now when i resize the screen you can see just what happens here so that's actually completely perfect and if you want kind of a very tall the uh, uh look the text is going to be clipping and this is not going to be looking nice anymore uh but then you might look into resizing the text or anything like that but for now we're just going to make it uh look great for this format what we can then do with the buttons is we can have this uh, go a bit to the right so we'll maybe put in uh, negative 10 there and do the same with the false here so let's uh, do negative 10 for the left so now they are just a bit closer together and i think that looks uh even better and uh, then we can take the true false and question panel and we can maybe just move them all up a bit just so they are completely centered on the screen and we could even go ahead and just scale it out just a tad so it fills almost the entire screen that looks great okay so i'm actually really satisfied with that i think uh, we're going to stick with that for now you can always change this and spend more time on time on it than i do then under the question panel we want to right click go under material ui and select text and we want to of course insert insert our actual uh, question or statement or fact or whatever you want to call this we're just going to call it the question and we want this to be um this is a uh, question actually it's a place holder good and we'll of course be changing this through code so it doesn't make sense to spend a lot of time thinking about what this should say let's just scale that up i'm holding down alt and clicking here to make it uh, scale with the entire panel and then we'll center that on both the x and the y then we'll scale up the font something like that let's make this 
uh, the white color down in the presets here and I think that actually looks good. You could go ahead and change the font if you want a, a different look but I actually really like this and that's basically it. I mean now we've created our UI and I'm going to show you just how cool the material UI plugin is because when I go ahead and hit play now we are not going to have any boring animations. If I click this you can see I get this really cool looking ripple effect. So that's super awesome. If you want a bit more of a hover animation, uh, you can see that currently when I hover it, we do get a bit more shadow, but we can also make it tint a bit. So let's go and do that. Let's select our uh, true button, go into the button layer and do the same thing with the false button. Select both button layers, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the shadow normal size, I want to change that to two and the shadow axis active size, I want to change that to three. And then I want it to also highlight when hovered. So now when we hit play, you can see that the shadow is a bit more clear and they actually tint. Uh, so they react to the mouse uh, hovering over and we still get that really cool uh, ripple effect. So that was basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm definitely looking forward to the next one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.